This is the February 16th, 2021 meeting of the Cushnet Public Library Board of Trustees. Uh, we are being audio taped and videotaped. I'm opening the meeting by roll call vote. Once I call your name, please respond here. Diane? Aye. Nancy? Oh, here. <laughs> here. Danielle? Here. Gary? Here. Steve? Here. And we also have Dina Brassa, the uh, library director on Zoom as well. Here. All right. Uh, we do have a quorum. And our first item on the agenda today is the uh, review and approval of the minutes from January the 12th. Does anyone have any questions or comments on those? Okay. If not, we need a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. Second it. All those in favor by roll call, Diane? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Danielle? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Steve? Aye. And myself, aye. Thank you. Okay, next we have the budget. I sent you all a snapshot of the budget as of Friday, um, which was the 12th, and nothing has changed uh, since then. I um, just wanted to point out a couple of things. I think you can see that the salary portion is right on target with where we need to be for this point of the fiscal year. Um, but dropping down into operating, I did just want to mention that we're 63% spent out for energy. That's roughly where we are at this time of year, because in the winter, we do see our highest Eversource bills. So I don't want anyone to worry about that. I think that this, that's pretty normal for us to be at around the 60% mark. Um, for February, the Eversource bill was the highest bill we've had this fiscal year at 1307. Um, it's higher than last year at the same time by about 16%. Um, that's the increase. And I think that's because we're using the walkway a lot more uh, this winter than we had to use it last winter. Um, knock on wood, the walkway is actually working. Um, so that's great news. Um, but we are, you know, having to turn it on quite a bit more often with all these little snowstorms we've been having or the snow. I don't know, some of them aren't even storms. It just like, you know, snows all day long and you get like an inch of accumulation, but we've had the walkway running for the whole time. And then we've had a couple of larger storms, as you know. So um, I, I think it's attributed to that. And if it would just stop snowing already, um, I think we'll see a much smaller bill in March and we'll get back you know, on track with, um, with spending in the energy line. But this is pretty normal for us, so, so don't worry about that. Um, I also wanted to point out that, yes, we are 104% spent out from the material line, as you know, we do expect to spend that out early in, or halfway around um, the halfway point of the fiscal year. Um, I did go over purposefully because we do have um, an overage in the sales line. You might remember, I think we've talked about it since too, but the sales bill um, was a little bit less this fiscal year than they had estimated because of a grant that they got that they applied to all of our um, assessment fees, all of the library's assessment fees. So uh, we won't be spending any more out of that sales line this fiscal year. So I took the overage from that and applied it to the material uh, line. I'm gonna save that overage um, or what's left of that overage in the sales line for now, just in case we run into a problem down the line with energy or something else going over. Um, but other than that, I think we're we're at a pretty good spot at 62.9% spent out. So unless you have any specific questions about that, that's uh, I think we're good. Anybody have any questions, comments? Okay. We need a motion. Motion to accept. I'll second it. All in favor by roll call, Diane? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Danielle? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Steve? Aye. And myself? Aye. Thank you. All 
Next on the agenda for old business is the reopening plan. <laughs> well, the only major difference is, as you know, today the whole staff is back in the building for regular hours. We've been following the uh, selectmen's partial remote plan since mid-December. So after two months, um, they have voted to bring staff back regular hours in-house, so no more remote work. Um, as you all know, I appreciated the opportunity that the selectmen gave for staff to be spread out, especially around the holidays and in that surge we saw um, slightly before and then after the holidays. So I think you know all of the staff here um, felt great about the fact that we were given the opportunity to work remote. Oh, why is my battery running low? Hang on. <laughs> Boy, technology problems left and right. It is definitely a technology <laughs> challenging day. <laughs> For sure. Um, that's what happens when you unplug the laptop and forget to plug it back in. Okay. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Um, so like I said, you know, we all were happy to have the opportunity to work partially remote, but boy, I think we're all really happy to be back in the building regular hours too, because it's really hard to just have two or three of us in the building at a time. That's been a big challenge, especially as we've um, become busier over the past month or so, uh, which is normal any year. Um, we sort of see a lull in November, December and for the holidays and then things pick back up in mid January and this year was no different. So I'm really happy that everybody's back for regular hours and um, I think the rest of the staff feels that way too. So we've got a big building which is great, it allows us to spread out. And we, now we just have to sort of remember what it's like to be in here with five people instead of just one or two other people. So we just have to be super mindful of that. And the staff here, as you know, has been great about doing that all along. So we'll just uh, get back to how things were before and hopefully all will be well. So um, other than that, I don't have too much to add. Um, the numbers, you know, for COVID, as you all know, I'm sure have been, you know, lessening over the past couple of weeks. Um, the percentage of positive cases has been dropping a little bit. Um, I think if we could see that continue to happen and if a cushion, it could bump down from the red, which we've been in for months now into say the yellow, um, I think that would be, and if that could happen for two or three weeks consistently, I think it would be a good time to approach the Board of Health again about um, reopening for browsing by appointment. Um, it's been a year next month since we've been closed um, and I, you know, no one ever expected that to happen, uh, of course. Um, but I, I think if we could see, it could see a trend of um, cases dropping in the area, then I think it would be a good time to again, just by appointment, but talk about opening for browsing. That's gone really well with computer use. Um, when we, you know, we've been doing the computers by appointment since October and that's been going really well. And I think that we could um, do it very safely for patrons and for the staff um, if we do it by appointment to start at least. Um, I know we have a lot of patrons who are anxious to get into browse. Um, the staff would like to see that happen also. So I, I think if we can, if that downward trend continues, then I think it'll be a good time to talk um, to the board of health about doing that. So just so you know where, where, where my thoughts are on that, um, I would love to see that we'd be able to do that possibly, you know, late March, early April, if the numbers continue to drop. And that, that's all I have for reopening. Sounds like a good plan. Does anyone have anything to add on that before we move forward? Okay. Uh, the next order of business is the fines or the fine free period or. Yeah, it's hard to believe we were talking about that two months ago um, and that it's already we, you know, you all voted for that two month window to the end of February and here we are again. <laughs> um, and, and nothing's changed on our end in terms of you know, I don't have anything new to add to the conversation in terms of what other libraries are doing. I think everyone is sort of just, everyone's sort of staying status quo with what they've been doing. So the libraries that were charging fines are still charging fines and the libraries that haven't been charging fines are still not charging fines. Um, so I, I really think it's, it's up to you all of, 
of if you want to keep keep it fine free for another two months. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I know people appreciate the fact that we're fine free. Uh, you know, I think that, I mean, who wouldn't appreciate that? Um, you know, and for the most part, I don't think anyone's taking advantage of the fact that we're fine free by hanging on to material longer. I really don't think that's happening. Um, so, I mean, I think it just comes down to a matter of, do you extend the courtesy a little bit longer or do you say, okay, we've been fine free for almost a year and it's time to charge fines again? Because it'll be, you know, a year in mid-March since um, we've been waiving fines. So, and maybe we've waived fines that go back to January and February too, just because it's easier on staff <laughs> um, from January, February of last year. So there's some bonus fine waiving that's happened. What are, uh, what are everyone's thoughts? Uh, that there's no really big problems with people not returning items on time. I don't think we're really seeing that. I mean, I think mm -hmm. um, the people who aren't getting them back in on time, because, um, you know, obviously we've got that week long quarantine period, but we can still tell that the thing, it's not because of the quarantine that the items okay. are late. The items were late before the quarantine and then are later because of the quarantine. But I don't think the people who are returning them late to begin with, I don't think are intentionally turning them late. Like, I don't think anyone's taking advantage of any yeah. of items a little bit longer. I don't, we might be seeing that a little bit, but I, I think it's the same people who are returning items late before, uh, you know, and then, and paying the fine. So I, I, I don't think anyone's, in other words, taking <laughs> advantage of us being fine free. I think it's just, it happens that, you know, you, you get something for two weeks and you think you'll be able to renew it and then it doesn't renew because somebody's waiting for it and you can't, you know, read it in two weeks. So, yeah. you know, norm normally that would, you know, maybe cost you 50 cents to keep it a little bit longer. Um, and now it's not, you know, at the moment, it's not costing you anything. But sometimes I, I do wonder sometimes if, if, you're, if you, if you, if you keep waiving the fines, at what point do you just say that you do away with fines? period forever like because it's not I, I don't think it's necessarily at this point I don't think it's necessarily because of the pandemic that the items are being returned late I think they're just being returned late like that's as the same way that they would in normal times. yeah so before the idea was well because of the pandemic we won't charge anything because people couldn't use the library for two months you know, when, when we initially were closed and then it just seemed like, oh, people aren't comfortable coming out. But the, the people who are later, people who have been coming here since the summer when we started takeout in the first place. So it's, it's not, I don't think it's a, they're not comfortable coming out and so they can't get here to return on time. Um, but again, I mean, is it a nice thing to do right now? Of course it is. You know, I think it, it makes everyone feel nice that they're you know, people are the ones who don't know that we aren't charging fines when they hear at the window that they won't owe anything. Every that's good feelings for everyone. It makes the staff feel nice to say it, and it makes the person feel nice who you know. But again, at what point is it okay? Enough is enough already. You know, I don't. I don't know. I think it would be nice to keep extending the courtesy as long as. Um, the library continues to operate as it is. Like once you make those appointments for people to come in to browse, then maybe it's time to rescind the, mm -hmm. yeah, the I'm rule. Good with that too. Yeah, I, like, makes sense. I agree with that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Gives everybody a little more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally understand and and appreciate mm -hmm. that point of view. So that's <laughs> even you know that's I I totally get where you're coming from with that, and and can see that that you know, might make sense too, as we're planning to reopen at some point, it's announced that, you know, that as we continue to shift into a more normal way to use the library that we reintroduce fines at that point too. So I totally get where you're coming from with that. And Danielle, you're thinking like when we, when we um, reopen for browsing by appointment at that point, which would be the back to normal sort of thing. Is that what your thought is? 
That, yes, that is what my thought is. Not reopen like, we're back to normal. No, <laughs> no. Once, okay, I once just, the browsing by appointment. That's what I thought. A, I just small semblance of normalcy. <laughs> <laughs> of normal, yeah. I think that's a, I mean, that's, does everyone agree with that? Does everyone, anyone have anything else? I mean, I no. think, I think that's kind of, you know, a good place to start um, because I think we do need to go back to normal and I think we do need to start charging fines again. But like you said, the courtesy is still good, especially where, you know, we're not really back to normal. So I, yeah, I think that's, that's probably good. Um, Okay, so let's um, make a motion. Do you want to make a motion in depth, not in de uh, to that point in time, or do you want to make another two month, um, not to exceed two months? Um, well, if we're going to, if we're going to, as the as the board. Um, wait until the browsing by appointment, even if we extended it two months, I think we're still going to be just kicking the can if, if the, if the browsing by appointment doesn't happen till let's say June, we're just going to be kicking it to June anyway, am I, am I right? So maybe we'll just um, make a motion to extend it until the library opens for browsing by appointment. That's fine. That? It's fine with me. Yep. Yep. Does that work? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't make the motion though. Oh, you can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll make the motion that we waive fines until such time as we reopen for browsing by appointment. I second it. All in favor by roll call. Diane? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Danielle? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Steve? Aye. Myself? Aye. Thank you. So I don't think uh, we'll need to vote on that again, Dina. Right. Correct. Correct. So you're all set. So when we end up having the browsing by appointment, um, you know, on that meeting agenda, we'll just make sure that we'll yeah, it could, it could be written in as part of the plan of reopening by appointment. Perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, new business. We have the um, bandwidth. Yes, so our um, compu public computers, as well as the staff computers, all run on the sales library network. Like, so everything that we do is through, is through them. And they um, when sort of identifying in their strategic plan for this um, past year, what they could do to improve library services. One of the um, thing, uh, one of the pieces that was identified as a priority would be to increase bandwidth throughout sales libraries. Um, the American Library Association recommends that there be a minimum of 100 MBPS for libraries serving a population of 50,000 people or under, and we currently are um, at 50 MBPS, so that which is megabytes per second, I think. Um, so we're at about halfway of where the American Library Association <laughs> is recommending our bandwidth be. Um, so sales did um, the legwork on this to figure out how much it would cost libraries to increase bandwidth. And right now we're looking at an increase of $642 per year to the telecommunications portion of our sales assessment, which is that sales line we spoke of earlier in the budget discussion. Um, uh, to me, to double what we have for $642 is a pretty good deal. Um, just to backtrack a little, what the bandwidth means, I mean, ultimately a greater bandwidth increases our internet connectivity speeds. It's, it's not, the, the bandwidth isn't the speed in which the internet runs, but a larger bandwidth or a greater bandwidth would allow us the opportunity to have our internet speeds increase. 
that would help with our Wi-Fi, um, which people are still using from the parking lot even while the building is closed. So I think increasing that bandwidth would <coughs> nothing but increase the signal for the Wi-Fi ultimately. Um, so I, I think it's a great option for us to take advantage of right now. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get all this information from sales in time to submit it in the original FY22 budget draft that was submitted. So I did speak about it about a week and a half ago with the town administrator just to get her thoughts on that because I wasn't sure what it would mean. It's only $642, but I wasn't sure what it would mean in terms of the FY22 budget. So she told me to revise it and to submit the budget to her with the $642 in the sales line and that she would have that for the finance committee when she was at the time putting together the packets for the finance committee. So I did adjust the sales line. I sent you a copy of that so that you can see the adjustment and it bumps our overall budget from 278, $278,118 to $278,760. It brings us from a 0.1% increase to a 0.3% increase which seems very, very small and still practically level funded as we were asked to do. Um, so again, I think it's something that we'd be silly not to take advantage of um, for that cost as well. And, and, and in addition to that, initially sales had thought there would be an upgrade cost because it might require us having a new modem and they weren't sure what the upgrade fees were gonna be, could be anywhere from like $30 to close to $100. But it turns out they got a grant, so they're going to write off the, um, using the grant money, pay for these um, upgrade fees for all of sales libraries. So it's, we won't even have to pay um, the fee to upgrade, which is pretty great too. Um, so basically, because I changed the budget draft, that's what I need you to approve is approving the change to the budget draft. Um, I can't imagine that you'd be opposed to increasing the bandwidth. <laughs> um, but if you are, feel free to say so. Um, but I can't imagine that would be an issue for anybody. Um, and I hope that the $642 increase to the budget isn't an issue for any of you either. But of course, please discuss if, if you're not happy with that. Does anyone have any questions or comments about that at all? No, no problem with that. No. I mean, it could possibly mean when it comes time to present to the finance committee that they ask us to deduct something from the budget in exchange for the 642 increase to the sales line. I didn't deduct anything in the draft. I just increased <laughs> by $642. So hopefully um, that can stay as is because it would be very difficult, as you know, to cut any more or to trim anywhere in the, in the budget. I agree. It's pretty lean as it is. It's pretty lean. <laughs> not, not much to be able to trim. Right. Okay, we need a motion. Make a motion to accept the increase in the FY22 budget by $642. I'll second it. All in favor by roll call, Diane? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Danielle? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Steve? Aye. Myself? Aye. Thank you. Thank you all. The director's report. So really quick, I just wanted to highlight a few things um, from the report for you. I mentioned that the um, town has hired a consultant service uh, to do a non, or excuse me, a union wage and classification study. So for union employees, um, some of you will remember we went through that process for non-union employees a few years back, um, and now uh, the town is doing it for union staff. So we have seven union staff members here at the library, and uh, we all took part they and myself um, took part in a uh, presentation via Zoom a couple of weeks ago with the consulting firm. Um, and they are now filling out um, position analysis questionnaires um, describing what it is that they do. I have to review those. They um, were due to me 
on Friday. I haven't re reviewed them yet because we weren't here yesterday. So I'll review them today, hopefully, so I can submit those over to the town administrator um, so that she can submit them to the consulting service for re review. Um, it's about a 90 day process and it may involve um, interviews via Zoom with either myself or with the union staff with the consulting firm to sort of fill in any gaps that the um, questionnaires don't answer. Um, it's a lengthy process, but in, I mean, in the end, hopefully um, the staff get, you know, see some good results um, from it and that it's a positive experience for everybody. So I just wanted to make you aware that that's happening. Um, and I also just wanted to quickly point out that we had a seventh grade teacher who's always great about reaching out to us to collaborate um, with things, um, but she teaches over at Ford and she reached out to us um, regarding wanting all of her students, which has got about 100 students, so all of them to be able to read the same book at the same time. And was that possible through any of our um, online platforms? And it is through Hoopla. Um, so we once we figured that out and she had selected the book that fits with their curriculum, which fortunately was available on Hoopla, uh, we were able to um, make sure that all of our students either had library cards already and that they were up to date if they already had them or if they didn't already have library cards, get them. Um, all in all, we ended up issuing about 60 new cards or replacement cards and we updated a couple dozen more. So, um, they're now in the middle of their project. It seems to be going well. Um, she seems pleased with it. And uh, you know, hopefully it'll open up the door for some more um, collaboration with either you know, her or any other teachers from the schools. Um, we're happy to help with anything like that you know, as we can. Um, it, it felt like a sort of normal thing to be doing, which was nice <laughs> also. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to point out that we did receive our state certification for this fiscal year, um, which is always good news. Even if you know that the answer is yes, you are certified, it's still nice to be told that. So we're, we're all set with our state certification and we'll be receiving the first of the two award payments within the next few weeks. And so that's good too, because we're using that money to um, supplement what we need to um, spend on material for this fiscal year. Um, I also wanted to mention that our beanstack challenge regarding uh, the snowballs is still going really strong. We now have about 2000 snowballs on the library's windows. Um, so if you drive by, take a look. <laughs> um, sitting in here right now, yes, I definitely feel snowed in because I'm surrounded by windows with uh, snowballs on them. So uh, ultimately what that means is that Christian at Readers have logged over 30,000 minutes so far of reading this year. Um, and that's pretty impressive that people are, are doing that. So we, ha we have a lot of active readers in town, which is wonderful. Um, we still have a couple of taken or excuse me, make and take kits available that follow along with a sort of Valentine's theme, the Sailor's Valentine's, which isn't really a, doesn't necessarily have to be for Valentine's Day, um, that we put out this uh, month for teens and adults. Those have been really popular and well-received. And it's thanks to the friends that we have the material for that. So uh, we still have some kits available so people can stop by to get their kit to make a Sailor's Valentine. We also have a couple of kids crafts that have come out this week for, or to sort of tie into school vacation. So there is a um, snowman keychain craft for older kids. And then there is a uh, penguin paper craft, a popping penguin paper craft for kids that will be coming out um, either today or tomorrow. And finally, like every year we have tax forms. People are always asking and they start calling like basically January 2nd wanting to know when we're getting tax forms. And so we do have state and federal tax forms available plus the instruction booklets for anyone who's looking for tax forms. So keep us in mind if you're in need, we're handing them out at the window, super easy. And that's about it, unless you had any questions for me from the report. I don't have anything, anyone else? No. no. Nope. Nope. Wait. 
Do we want to set the um, next meeting date? I had um, noted March 16th, if possible, if that works for people. That's a Tuesday. That's good. It's Tuesdays good. work for me. It's good for me. Does it? Does that work for everyone else? Yep. And checking yep. and should be. Yeah. Okay. Be. Still noon. Does that still work for everyone? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Yep. You guys are all easy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Tuesday, March 16th at noon via Zoom. Yes. We won't know what to do when we're in person again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I haven't met any of you in person. That's well, right. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, it just doesn't seem like possible, but yep, here it is. <laughs> it is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. All right, if anybody, uh, if nobody has anything else, then we need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor by roll call, Diane. Aye. Nancy. Aye. Danielle. Aye. Jerry. Aye. Steve. Aye. Myself, aye. This February 16th, 2021 meeting of the Accushionate Public Library Board of Trustees is officially adjourned. It is 1244. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.